Hi, my name is Alyssa Cibrian, and this is my model of the HIV virus and the T-cell. The HIV virus is generally transmitted through the blood and some bodily fluids, and the T-cell is a part of the immune system, which helps fight off infections. The HIV virus consists of the glycoproteins, which assist in connecting to the CD4 receptor to help enter the T-cell. The viral envelope which generally consist of lipids. Then we also have the matrix core, which consists of proteins that helps hold in the capsid, which is a structural protein that contains the viral RNA strands. Also contains enzymes, such as the reverse transcriptase, the integrase enzyme, and also protease. So the way the HIV virus connects to the T cell, again, is through the glycoprotein, GP120, connects to the CD4 receptor, then it enters the cytoplasm of the T cell, starts to disintegrate all of these little areas until it gets to the capsid, and releases the RNA and all of the other helpful enzymes within it. Once that happens, the RNA and the reverse transcriptase enzyme work together to create the viral DNA strand. That strand then enters the nucleus, and with the help of the integrase enzyme, it sort of cuts a part of the host cell's DNA in order to sort of make room and integrate the viral DNA strand into it. And then once that happens, the cell cycle sort of continues to create the virus cell. So when that happens, the viral RNA strand is then submitted out into the cytoplasm. It's given to the ribosomes to start creating those viral proteins. Once the proteins are created, the viral proteins are not quite active until protease comes in and cuts them into the necessary strands to become infectious. Once that is finished, they start to assemble itself they start to create their own matrix again, containing the necessary information to create the virus cell. And once that happens, your exocytosis, it goes out into the cell and into the bloodstream, where it continues to infect other T cells and spread.